In this video, we'll be looking at section 1.6, factoring. We're going to be using the AC method again. This time we're going to deal with when A equals 1 instead of A not equaling 1. So our central question will be, how do I factor a quadratic when a equals 1. And so I'm going to remind us of our quadratic in standard form. And that's that a x squared plus b x plus C, where A, B, and C are always going to be constant, some kind of integer values. But instead, A will always equal 1 for this. So what it's going to look like is x squared plus 3x plus 7, where I get A equals 1. That's that hidden 1 right here. We'll have an, a hidden 1, so that's A equals 1, B equals 3, and C equals so just reminding us of that standard form. We're going to be using that AC method like we did um, in the previous lesson. So we can jump right in. So say I have x squared plus 9x plus 20. I know I have my a equals 1, b equals 9, and c equals 20. I'm going to use my ac method, so I'll draw my giant x over here. We'll put our a times c up top and our b in the bottom. Well, 1 times 20 is 20. And then B is 9. Now we're just um, using, uh, you know, using our brain to think about what numbers will multiply to 20 and at the same time add to 9. So you multiply to 20 and add to 9. we think about it, I could use 1 times 20. Doesn't need, when I add 1 and 20, I don't get 9. I could do 2 times 10. 2 times 10 is 20, but 2 plus 10 does not equal 9. Then we get to, oh, 5 times 4. So let's look at that. 5 times 4 equals 20, and then 5 times plus 4 equals 9. So now I'm going to split my middle term using 5 and 4. So this gets my middle term. So I'll have x squared plus, now here's my first, so it's going to be 5x plus 4x, splitting it up this time, uncombining like terms, and we bring down our plus 20. Now we're ready for our factor by grouping, putting my parentheses up, and I ask myself, what's common to the first group? Well, in my first group, I have an x that is common. I have an x squared and a 5x, so I can factor out that x. And when I do that, I'm left with an x plus 5. Remember, we can always do quick distributive property to make sure we're correct. x times x is x squared. x times 5 is 5x, so we're feeling pretty good. And then on my back end, bring my plus sign down. I can factor out a 4. So I'll factor out that 4.
once I factor out that 4, on my back end I have my x plus 5. And here we can see, oh, I got the same thing, x plus 5 and x plus 5. So I'll pull that x plus 5 out front. And then what's left behind is my x plus 4. So I can bring that down and we're done with the problem. Now there is a shortcut in here. I'm not going to show it to you. I'm going to let you try to find it. If you compare, and the shortcut only works when a equals 1. That's why I don't like to really show it because we become we lean on it too much, but it, and it only works in these certain cases. So there's a shortcut. And you can kind of see it if you combine our final answer with what happened in our AC method. But this only works, the shortcut, if you see it, only works when a equals 1. So right now what I'd like you to do, if you would pause right here and try this one on your own. And if you, if you see the shortcut and you want to use it, go for it. So we're going to pause right here and try this one on our own. So hopefully you took the chance to try this on your own. And we'll go through this pretty quickly. So I got my A equals 1, B equals 11, and C equals 24. So I do A times C is 24, B is 11. Numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11 are 8 and 3. So I can have my X squared plus 8X plus 3X plus 24 splitting that middle term up into my 8 and 3. Next we'll do our grouping. And I can factor an x out of this first group, so I have x times x plus 8. I can factor a 3 out of my second group, so I have x times x plus 8. There's my common term. Factor that out front, x plus 8, and then I'm left behind with x plus 3. And that is how we can use the AC method to solve um, these kind of problems. So what I'm so if you see the quick if you see the shortcut, look at our answer and look at the AC method over here. You can use that, but remember, I can't stress this again. Shortcut only works when a equals one. Only use the shortcut if a equals one. Otherwise, we have to do um, this factor by grouping. Let's do a couple more examples flip this over. Um, let's try one like this. x squared minus 8x plus 12. So I'm going to use my AC method. I have a equals 1, b equals negative 8, c equals 12. So I do this. 1 times 12 is 12, b is negative 8, and we're multiplying to 12 while adding to negative 8. So I need two numbers that can multiply to 12 and then add to negative 8. Well, the only, re the only way I can add two numbers and get a negative and multiply two numbers and get the positive is if they're both negative. And when I think about it, if I do negative 6 and negative 2, I can do it. Now, I want to stress that you don't have to be right the first time. Say I just try something. Sometimes we just got to try something. Say, say I'm like, well, let's try 4 and 3. Just write it, and you can erase it if it doesn't work. So 4 times 3 is 12, but 4 plus 3 is not negative 8. So we just got to try things. If you're sitting there staring at it, hoping to see it, it might not come to you. So you're so maybe we'll try 6 and negative 2. Well, 6 times negative 2 is not negative 12, so that's not going to work. So maybe if I try negative 6 and negative 2. Negative 6 times negative 2 is positive 12. Okay, looking good. Negative 6 plus negative 2 is negative 8. Okay, that worked. So just writing things and trying can be very helpful in making this process kind of flow. Otherwise, you might just be staring at it for a while. So try things. Write them down and try them.
Okay, so we have our negative 6 and our negative 2, so I'm splitting that middle term up into negative 6x and negative 2x. If I combine these, negative 6x minus 2x, it equals negative 8x. So now we'll... So now remember, I, what I want to do is turn subtraction into uh, addition of the negative. So I'm going to have x squared minus 6x plus negative 2x plus 12. Mine's starting to get a little tight. So I'm going to rewrite it so I have some space to work. Now we'll do our grouping. I can factor an x out of this. And I have x minus 6 left behind. I can factor out a, a 2 or a negative 2. Which one would be best? Well, if I factor out a negative 2, I'll be left with x minus 6. So if you factor out a 2 and you're not perfectly matched up, maybe change it to a negative 2. Now we see that we have the x minus 6, so I can pull that out front. And then I'm left behind with x plus negative 2 or x minus 2. Either would be acceptable. Okay, so I'd like you to try this one on your own. So pause right here and try this one on your own. So if you took the chance to try this one on your own, let's move through this pretty quickly. A equals 1, B equals negative 22, C equals 21. So I multiply my A and my C, 1 times 21 is 21. Um, and then negative 22 is my B. So I'm looking for two numbers that add to 21, add to t multiply to 21, and add to negative 22. So when I think about this, I can come up with negative 21 and negative 1. Negative 21 times negative 1 is a positive 21, and negative 21 plus negative 1 is a negative 22. So I'm going to split that middle term up, minus 21x, minus 1x. Plus 21. Let's go ahead and do our plus and negative. Now we're ready to group. So I factor out an x, and I have x times x minus 21, plus I can factor out a negative 1. So I have negative 1 times x minus 21. Got my common factor of x minus 21, so I have x minus 21 times x plus negative 1, or x minus 21 times x minus 1. So that's the main idea behind um, how we're going to factor using the AC method, specifically when A equals 1. And um, if you're seeing the shortcut, again, there is a shortcut in here where if I compare my answer to what's happening in this AC method, I can kind of see where my end result is going to be. So if you're seeing that shortcut, you can lean on it. But remember, shortcut only works. when x, when not x, when a equals 1. Do not use this when a does not equal 1. So I want to thank you for watching this video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.